Hello, everyone. My name is John Stiles, and I'm the marketing manager for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar, uh, Accounting Technology Horizon and uh, Account Receivable Benchmarks webinar, uh, presented by Locksteps, uh, Lindsay Austed and David Fryoff. Just a little housekeeping before we get started here. Uh, everyone has been placed on mute uh, to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can submit any questions that you do have. If you go to submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar, and we'll answer all of them at the end of the presentation. We are also recording the presentation. It will be distributed to all, uh, all registrants tomorrow. Finally, we appreciate your participation in our polling questions throughout the presentation. So if you just take a minute to interact with those when they come up. And with that said, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to attend this webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you with tools, support, software, and industry knowledge whenever you need it. We've invited Lockstep here today because they're number one AR automation software. So whether you're here researching a new solution or just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the presentation. With that said, I'll hand things over to Lindsay. David, next slide, please. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lindsay Ostad. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at Lockstep. And joining in with me is David Fryoff. He is our Solutions Engineer. Uh, John, thanks so much for having us today. And we'll go ahead and get started. Here's our agenda for today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about uh, Lockstep, uh, AR automation, the challenges, what AR automation is, We'll go through a benchmark report that David's gonna take you through. And then we're also going to cover a um, high level demo. All right, so we've got our first poll. And as John said, please be interactive. So the first question is, how do you manage collections? So please select, select all that apply. John, how are we doing with uh, the polling? We have 78% voted, so I'll, I'll close this here in just another second. All right, so we had 71% with Outlook and Excel, 29% with a custom solution, and 43% with another uh, collections automation solution. Great, it's very interesting. A little bit about Lockstep. We're a nationally recognized accounting software. Um, we help connect the world's finance team so they can work better together. On average, we improve cash flow by over 30% and reduce delinquency by over 50%. We've been in the Sage ecosystem and a partner since 20, um, 2008 and an Acumatica partner since 2020. Next slide. Here's some of our great customers. So we go to conferences and we see our customers and they tell us how happy they are since they have automated their accounts receivable. And in a moment, I'm going to highlight two customers and share their story. Here's some of the certified integrations that we support. And you'll notice that we support all of the ERP systems that SWK Technologies sells as well. And then I like to talk about uh, Mar Vista Entertainment. They are a Sage customer. And by selecting receivables, the automation gave them time back to focus on more strategic initiatives. And that helped them improve their day sales outstanding by having more time. And then with Avenue, they're also another Sage customer. And the receivables allowed them to scale their business without having to add more people. It also gave them better job satisfaction and allowed them to use their own judgment. And 
And then the challenge with manual AR collections is just as we were hearing from our first poll was a lot of people are doing things manually or managing it in spreadsheets and they don't have visibility. And um, the pandemic really exposed this when traditional accounting teams that were located in an office, you know, were sent home and the disparate information that was all over, you know, not, not being able to uh, share emails or walk over to someone else's desk. So it caused a lot of frustration and our system allows for everything to be um, in one location and gives you the uh, visibility. And here we have poll number two. Is automation a pri priority for you, your organization in the coming year? Give everyone a few more seconds. John, how are we doing? Doing pretty good. We're back up to our 78%, so I will close the poll in just one more second Great. here. And so we had uh, 43 saying, yes, we are pr uh, prioritizing AR automation. 14% yes, we are, priori we are prioritizing other backup. And 43, no, we have no other priorities. I'll share it right there with you. Sorry about that. Interesting. All right, and what is AR automation? It's cloud-based software that integrates with your accounting system to streamline and simplify the AR collections activities with your customers. And below is what an AR automation system should include. The automated communications allows you to share the email and send emails with um, automation, and David's going to cover that in the demo. A customer self-service portal, that's one of the big things that we hear from customers and prospects when we attend conferences is that they really want to give their customers a better experience and allow them to go online, see their invoices, pay their bill, make any disputes, and uh, just gives them better access. Collections activity management, David's going to cover a little bit more around that, as well as cash application. And, you know, the forecasting and reporting is really good in our system, too. It allows you to see um, and, uh, cash projections in real time so you can make better business decisions. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to David to talk about our collections benchmark report. Thanks, Lindsay. What we're really excited about this data is that the lockstep receive it's based upon lockstep receivable customers who are in our production, who are in production now and are, have been using lockstep receivables for the last 10 months. I'll let you read the slide, but we have good diversification around industries, revenue size, and a good mid-market representation of a revenue size of two and a half to 205 million. In most of these customer reactions, interactions, a business case and ROI model was created pre-sales by the partner company working with my team. This ROI includes relevant measurement of the customer's DSO, their average days delinquent, and the total receivables, and a target for improvement. This data was collected post-implementation and mapped back to actual results back to the pre-sales targets. We have made this a standard practice for most of our customers as a result. In addition to great diversification groups of companies, we also had a great variation of the number of accounts, the number and size of invoices, and a mixture of adoption. Some had communications that were uniform for their customers. Some had communications that were reflected, customer size, customer type, and credit status. So how can this be quantified? In our benchmarks, AR staff without AR automation require 25 to 40 minutes per phone call. This includes prep time to get the information together, call time with customers, and post-call administration, write-ups, and reporting. Through the combination of phone calls and emails, the average AR staff can, compete, can complete 40 to 60 outbound communications per day. This limited capability of, a, of AR staff means that 
less than 10% of customers are contacted after the invoice presentment because staff are typically focused on the 60 day past due and above. The hacker group reported one of the biggest obstacles to reducing DSO was a lack of technology and adoption by accounting departments. It's easy to see why. Most accounting departments use, as we saw in our poll, use Outlook and Excel for their technology stack. With no integration, it means data is constantly being manually transcribed between emails and the ERP. With no automation, it means the follow-ups, promise tracking, and dispute resolution is all manual. With no activity management, visibility into what got done isn't available and it's hard to control. So let's get started using the key activities that feed the benchmark data, automated communications, customer self-service, and activity management. First, we examine the impact of automated communications. These automated communications include reminders, statements, and past due notices. They replace spreadsheets, post-its, three-ring binders, anything that your team is utilizing to try to track these things manually. These customer communications are your voice, completely customizable. They could sound like your company and adopt the tone and content specific to the customer or collection stage, are tailored to your customer's types. As we heard at Sage Transform, we saw with the Mar Vista case study, Walmart in a small retail account should not get the same communication. And it's also specific to your credit policy. There's different messages at 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days and they can also vary by customer type. When we compare pre and post implementation of automation and look at companies not using the automation, the average days to link rent was 39 days. With automated communications it enables the average days delinquent to drop to 18, and that's over a 53% improvement. In this new normal, communications is critical success factor and automation is key to that. Automated communications is now a necessity. Even if you're using automation already, you need to adapt to be more effective. We're helping customers to change frequency and content. For instance, one communication being added is a customer self-service notification on installment plans. The next benchmark looks at the importance of the human touch and tools for the collector. Human touch AR is a customer relationship role. When we asked the AR communication, the AR community, what they were find rewarding about their role. Two factors dominated: building relationships and helping others. The human touch, focus, and timed is the most effective. In this data, you can again see the impact of automated communications compared to 100% manual collection communications. And the best combination, leveraging automated communications and personalized communications, and the good old-fashioned conversation. A solely automated communication-centric approach is an option that some of our customers have employed. It's really effective in driving folks to the portal and accelerating payments. It's represented by that 23% past due. While this may be a perfect approach to small retail mom and prop accounts, it's often not the right approach for larger white glove or strategic customer types. Likewise, the manual, the collector-centric approach can also be effective as represented by the 34% past due. This customer outreach using automated communications with majority being AR team calling and emailing manually. What's really interesting is a combination of the two approaches is by far the most effective and represents our study, and as represented in our study, 16% past due, which is a drop of 52.9%. The collector's cockpit, I will show you the collector's cockpit, which is the collector side of the activity management and track activities and result while directing the collector on the next BEX call. We will see in a couple of minutes, the reverse side of our customer portal, the collector's cockpit. It will give the collectors tools to make their more, to tools to make them more productive, automated communications and templates based on customer class and credit policy. And we also provide a next best call, eliminating spreadsheets and that manual preparation. And we provide a dashboard so the team can track productivity, 
challenging accounts, and cash projections. The final benchmark is looking at a customer self-service. Customer self-service is a way to enable your customers to complete activities on their own rather than the AR team having to do an extra activity such as resend an invoice. Using automated customer communications to drive self-service is a clear winner. We have heard loudly and clearly from our lockstep customers and prospects that automated payments based on best practice in a pandemic are a big thing. And we see that it is bringing down the average days to pay by 14 days. This is just one of the components of the self-service portal. Today, our portal includes passwordless entry, payments in both ACH and credit card, promise to pay, disputes, self-service on invoices, contact information, W9, and statements. Other factors of how customer self-service reduces past due and add is that the customer has immediate access to information they need to pay, such as PO, POs, statements, missing invoices, taking as many barriers out of the way that out of the way for the customer to pay you has a significant impact as shown in the data. From what we heard in our AR community was the fact that paper checks increase past due and average days delinquent. So we examined that. And in particular, we examined the impact of accepting online payments. Online payments is gaining in priority and popularity in the new normal. You can see the impact of online payments by a drop of 14 days in average days delinquent and 8% drop in past due. And we're ready for our poll number three, which I can read this one, Lindsay. What is your biggest priority in improving your accounting processes? How are we doing? We're doing pretty good. Just give it a, another couple of seconds here. Seems like around 40 okay. seconds we get everybody in there. Okay. All right. So let me share with you the results with you this time. So there you go. So let's talk about the components of lockstep receivables. Automated communications, again, it's your tone, your message per customer and credit policy. Activity management, the, blends, the blend of human touch and automation and the collector's cockpit. The customer self-service, our portal including payments and cash app, and then forecasting and reporting based on actuals. Now we're gonna tell you the benefits of lockstep receivables. So reducing DSO is good. It increases your bank balance, which means you have more working capital to invest in the business. That working capital also increases your cash from operations by reducing interest expenses or increasing interest income. What we also witness is reduction in DSO are always accompanied by increase in operational efficiency. Finally, since the drop in DSO increases liquidity and profits, there's an increase in shareholder value. Does this align with what everybody here is thinking? So now let's go into how it works. So Lockstep Receivables pulls your data in through the sync into our system and your AR data sits there. On top of your AR data sits our AR sequencing. And this is what generates your auto communications, whether it's via email, SMS, or through an automated phone call, that then drives the customer to that self-service portal, which, in, which helps them to pay to pull that cash in faster. The AR sequencing also creates an activity management or collector's cockpit for the collector, so they have everything that they need in order to reach out to the customer to help pull that cash in faster. And now we're gonna go ahead and go into the demo. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll share for the demo. So 
So in our demo today, we're going to begin with the automation or the sequencing. As, as I mentioned in the PowerPoint, you can take your customers and break them up into different segments or groups. So you can control that message to that group. So a lot of our customers will utilize our best practice, but then create a white glove credit class for their larger customers that they don't necessarily want to do automated communication templates to. And then each of these credit classes or segments have a set of steps on them. Then each step has a set of business rules that tell it when to generate. For example, for, the, for, for this first reminder to go off, the balance of the invoice has to be greater than zero. It's got, the total H has to be greater than zero. It's got to be at least seven days past due. It's not in dispute and it doesn't have a promise to pay. That way, the customer doesn't promise to pay an invoice or dispute an invoice and then receive an automated email about, the, about that same invoice a couple days later. This is all completely customizable as well. Ways that we can help you be more proactive, as we mentioned in that manual process, you're typically chasing those past due ones. So to help you be more proactive, we have a invoice coming due step, which will generate at 10 to 7 days before the due date, helping to try to pull that cash in faster. We can also automate when customers are getting close to their credit limit as well. And then each of these steps have a communication template associated with them. And then our system comes with our standard best practice templates. You can also create your own or modify one of ours. And the great thing is, is our templates are personalized to that customer. We talk about in the benchmark study that the human touch is a, is a very important thing. So here, even though it's an auto-generated email, as you can see, it's got the customer's name in there. You've got their aging information, as well as the signed user's name and phone number. That way it looks like a personal email to the customer from the user, even though it's an auto-generated email. And what this would do is this would, this would help your customers to be able to adopt better to the new process, coming from a manual process to an automated one. The next section we're gonna go over is the account overview or account detail. And in that manual process working out for the spreadsheets, it's really tough to be able to see a good holistic view of the customer because you're typically only seeing the last, the last note, the last couple of notes in that spreadsheet. So with our system, you can come in here and see the, the, that holistic view of the customer and of the individual invoice as well. So right now we're looking at Candy Corp. You can see how Candy Corp pays. In this case, they paid 10 days late. And you can see all the open transactions here, as well as you can see all the activities that have been done against the account. And simply when activity is is created, whether it's being done by the automation or by the user, a invoice or group of invoices is tagged to that activity. And what that does is that helps give you the record at the invoice level of all the different times you reach out to the customer about that specific invoice. So as you can see here, we can see the email that was sent from, or the view the notes from the phone call that was made, or you can click on view details to pull up that activity. In this case, we're looking at a past due notice that went out to County Corp. And in this notice, we have our view statement button. This essentially is a single sign-on link. So there's no need for them to have to remember a username and password, nor do they have to sign up for it. All they have to do is just receive an email out of the system containing the link. So if you go ahead and click on the link here, and we're going to open this up. And now we're going to the self-service portal. And we talked about in the benchmark study as well that you know, one of the things that customers have request on is those PF copies. And that could add that additional almost 14 days to the invoice lifecycle. So the great thing about our product is your customers can come in here. They can download those PF copies right away. They can also make that payment. They can make the payment by credit card or ECH. They can save that payment for future use, as well as they can roll an auto pay, which automatically pay their invoices on the due date or a specific day of the month. They can also send a message here. They can upload any attachments, whether they're, just, they're disputing invoice or they're just uploading their W-9 form, they can easily do that here. They can also dispute an invoice. They, you get to pick which reason codes they can choose from. Our reason codes are completely customizable and you can have as many as you need. And whenever a message is sent or a dispute is done, the assigned user to that collector is automatically notified of that message or that dispute so they can start working it to help get that dispute resolved quicker. They can also do a promise to pay. They can pick that promise to pay date and add that message and submit it. And the great thing is, is that 
if the customer fulfills the promise to pay, it doesn't, the system will close it. It only alerts the collector when they break it. So typically in that manual process, this is being done on a in Outlook or on a spreadsheet, and they have to go into the ERP system lookup to see if they paid. If they do pay, then it saves the collector time from having to go do that. Then they also can take this grid and export it to Excel. They can see all their closed invoices and payments, any history of messages with the collector on the portal, the collector's profile, as well as any documents you upload for them. These could be contracts, W9 forms, anything at the customer level. And now when you go back into this system, and we're gonna go into the day in the life of the collector. And so we're going to go in as a burner grant. And so typically in that manual process, and you're working off those spreadsheets, as we've shown in the, in the benchmark study, you're working out of two, sometimes three, three different systems. You're working out of your spreadsheet, you're going to your ERP system to look up that customer, and then going to your email to send that email and then back to the spreadsheet to add your notes. The good thing about our product is that it centralizes it all into one spot. So when you log in the morning, you can see how you're doing. You've got your next best activity here. This essentially is your aging spreadsheet. The great thing is, is this is generated by that automation. So you get to choose what shows up in this list as well as in what order it shows up in. That way the collector is working what you want them, what you want them to work, when you want them to work it. And then you've got your messages section here. This essentially is your Outlook or your calendar, your email. So you have any follow-ups due today or past due, any unread email, as well as any broken promises. And when, you, when you're ready to work the first one on your list, all you have to do is just click on it and open it up. Now, whether you are sending that email or you are making that phone call, you can easily be able to see that customer level information as well. So you can click the drop down here. You can see their net credit information, including our lockstep credit score, which essentially you, you get to pick five different parameters and you weight them in order to create the scale. This is typically utilized if, a, if you have credit limits and a customer wants to do a credit increase, or you can utilize this in decision making for if they're, you know, got some past invoices and you're trying and they're trying to do a large order. So those are kind of some of the things that our customers utilize this for. You can also see historical information. So average days, late trends, if they've had any broken promises or disputes in the last two years, as well as the current aging. Other highlights are you can see transactional information. So any payments made against the account, as well as any open invoices. And then you can view the customer's access to self-service portal. Now, I always like to highlight this because if, this, if the user is getting the habit of checking this before they send that email or make that phone call, and they talk it up to the customer, we find that really helps with your customers to adopt the new portal. So for sending that email to the customer, we can easily go to the email tab here. This is where we can select the template or type out the email yourself. You go to the attachments tab. You can, this is where you can either attach those tagged invoices or you can attach a, a statement or any other report here, or you can browse your computer and attach something from your computer. Let's say you did get an email or a phone call from the customer and you get that promise to pay. You can easily do the promise to pay here. You, you can pick your promise to pay date, mark that the customer promised. And then if they, if they break it, the system's gonna fill out this actual part down here. It's gonna mark it as broken, give you the amount that they paid and the date that they paid it. And it's gonna let the collector hear of that broken promise. Now let's say this is a really tough customer and you wanna to try to schedule a fault for yourself a couple of days in advance to try to get that payment information to confirm the customer is going to pay. You can easily do that follow up here. And the great thing is like the promise to pay, if the invoice gets paid before the date, in this case, April 6th, the follow-up will get closed along with the activity because it's not needed anymore because the invoice has been paid. So another place where we can show a load of time savings for the collector. And then the last thing I want to show is this save and next item feature. And this is one of my favorite features in the system because it's, it's such a simple thing. All it does is save this activity and pull the next one up on the list. But this is the equivalent to what I was talking about before in the collector working on those three different places. So it's equivalent to going to notes on the spreadsheet, adding a note, picking then that next customer, going into the ERP system to look up the customer, into the email to send that email, and then back to the spreadsheet to look at those notes or to add the notes. So we find that this button alone saves our customers on average of about five to 10 minutes in that transition from one customer to the next. 
So the next section I'm gonna go over is reporting out of the system. And then we're gonna start off with the dashboard. This is where you can get high level reporting out of the system. Right now we're logged in as the collections manager, which essentially shows the company rolled up as a whole, but they can also look at each individual credit user to see how that user is doing with the customers assigned to them. If multi-company can view the dashboard by company as well. You've got your basic information here, and then you have got your projected cash receipts. So you can see these projections in the next seven days, 30 days, current month end, and next month end. As well as you can see previous month's projections, current month, what's actually, what has been brought in versus what's been projected, and the next two months projections. And these projections are based upon five different reasons. The first being the promise to pay, which we've gone over in the demo today. The second is expect to pay, and that's when the collector expects the customer to pay, but has not officially gotten that promise to pay yet. The third is predicted payment value. This is one of the ones our customers really like. What it is, is we've developed an algorithm that looks at a customer's payment history and predicts when invoice can be paid based on that payment history. So say the invoice was due on the 19th, and the customer typically pays 10 days late, then the predicted payment date would be today based on that payment history. So it really helps to take the guesswork out of those cash projections. The fourth is the due date, and the fifth is unresolved, and that's when it's past the due date and past the predicted date, but it doesn't have a promise to pay or expect to pay on it. The next section is the team activities. In that, in, in that manual process, typically it's really tough to track how the team's doing, especially over a period of time, because you're, you're having to go through the, spread, the spreadsheets and be able to look at that information. So, so the great thing about our system is that you can track it all right here. You can see how the team's doing as a whole, as well as how each individual team member is doing, how many accounts they've touched, invoices they've touched, emails they've sent, and calls they've made. And then you can also see that data in a wide variety of different ranges, including a specific custom date range. And it's refreshable, so it's real-time data. You can see if customers access the self-service portal. So you can see how many visitors have accessed today versus this week, as well as payments made today versus this week. And you can see historical trends as well. You can see your current AR aging. You can view that by due date or by invoice date. We do have the capability of customizing our aging buckets if need be. You can see your average days late trends by invoice amount. You can see your top customers as well as you can see your overall average days late trend and your prior six month DSO trend. And then some of the more detailed reporting that you can get out of the system is typically in the invoice view here. This is where we can get reporting off of invoices that are in disputes. Wait for a second for it to load, so I guess. And then, um, so with this reporting, we can either bookmark it, or we can create what's called a advanced alert, which will send an email with a spreadsheet attached in your email. So you have that report right there at your fingertips. So as I mentioned, we can give that reporting on invoices that are in dispute. This could be showing all invoices in dispute or based on a specific reason code, or let's say your disputes are typically handled within 10 days and you're looking to be able to get alerted if a dispute goes beyond that time period, we can do that as well. And we also have reporting off of short pays, whether your customers are purposely doing because they're disputing invoice or they are, or they are um, doing it accidentally, we can give you reporting on those short pays as well. And as I mentioned, they, any of these reports can be bookmarked to add to your favorites here as well. So you have easy access to it and not have to remember where exactly in the system that report is. So th that's, what we, that's what I'm going to show today in the demo. So I'm going to stop presenting and I'll go back to presenting the slideshow. So, I don't know, do you want to talk to this, Lindsay? Either way, I can I can cover it, or if okay. you want to. So if you um, would like a specific demo with us, uh, we'd be happy to do that with you. You could email us or, or call us, or you can follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, you can also 
reach out to SWK and they can put you in touch with one of our account re representatives as well. And we'll go ahead and open and, it up. Yeah, go I was going to say, we'll turn it back over to John for questions. Yep, great. Thank you, Lindsay and David. Uh, we're going to open everything up to questions now. So if uh, anybody does have any questions, please just take a moment and enter it into the questions section of GoToWebinar. And uh, we'll just give everyone one second here and then we will get going. So as I'm waiting for uh, more questions to come in, we do have a couple so far. And um, so the first question uh, is, do you have one standard user or different users available? So we have two different users available. We have a credit user, which is a full user in the system. They would be the ones that would be working the activities in the collector's cockpit and being there every day, as well as we have an inquiry user, which is a read only or view only access. So these are typically for a backup team or for management who want to go in and view the reporting out of the system. Great. And um, so uh, one other question that came in, it's a two-parter. So do you provide a scope for implementation and is there a post implementation, uh, po uh, sorry, words, uh, and is there a post -implement implementation training or support? Sorry, guys, I really butchered that one. It's all right. So yes, yeah, so we do provide a scope with the, um, with a statement of work and a scope um, before you sign with the, sign with us. And then the second part of it is there, is there after go live and project close out at that point, you are assigned a customer success manager which will be able to help you with um, any question, any questions you have, as well as they would be able to do ongoing training. So whether you just need a refresher course or you're hiring somebody new and you need training for them, they would be able to do that, as well as you have access to our support chat, which is right within the platform to answer any quick questions or if you have any issues. All right, and if I can get through these next two, we have two more questions and it's, uh, how can I find out more information about Lockstep? You can browse out to our website, lockstep.io, and you'd be able to view more information on there, as well as if you out, if you reach out to your um, representative at SWK, they can put you in contact with one of our account managers where we could set up to do a call and a demo for you. Right, and the last one is, uh, why is it important to have automated communications? It's an, as we saw with the benchmark study, it's important to have automated communications because it, it really helps to free up your, your user's time in order to focus on the customer they need to focus on. We find that the combination of the, of the personal touch and the automated uh, automation helps to bring down that average day's delinquent for your customer. So ultimately it pulls that cash in faster and it gives you more cash on hand to be able to, 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 be able to work with at that point. Lindsay, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. No, I think that was great. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions we have here for today. So, um, you know, again, thank you, Lindsay and David, for the great presentation, taking the time uh, to be here today. And thank you, everybody in the audience, for attending our webinar. Uh, we hope everybody uh, you know, enjoyed it and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.